Joel Wanasek here with Unstoppable Recording Machine. Today I'm going to show you all how to make your own bass drops. Now you can go buy bass drop samples, you can use other people's, but sometimes you just want to make them custom. And you know what? They're really easy to make. So let me show you how. So right here I want to put a bass drop. Let's listen to it. So we're gonna put a big metal bass drop here. So first thing I'm gonna do is add an audio track here in Cubase. I'm gonna do it in mono. We're gonna call this sub drop. We'll call it fire sub drop just because it's funnier. I mean, obviously the sub drop's gotta be lit or else, you know, no one's, no one's gonna like it. So, all right, let's open up here our inserts. And there's something in here called a test generator. Now, if you're not using Cubase, there are a lot of different uh, generators like MDA, Test Tone, et cetera. Just find a test generator that creates a sine wave. Um, so let me turn this thing on. This is going to be annoying, so bear with me. All right, so I got to turn it off. Now, it's on 100 hertz right now. I'm going to set it at 80. And you can go and you can use one of those charts in the internet depending on the key of the song. So let's say the key, the song's in C minor or A minor or et cetera, whatever you want, you can figure out what hertz you wanna start on. But if you're gonna do a broad sweeping one, I'd recommend maybe starting around 80, maybe 70, whatever. Okay, so if you turn it on. You can hear it. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna automate uh, the pitch, or sorry, the the amount of the hertz value here, frequency hertz value down over the time, and then we'll auto, we'll automate this in. So I'm going to turn it on and hit right automation. I don't give up. Now I'm going to turn it off because it's going to be really annoying to listen to. So let me just draw the automation in, and what we're going to do is we're going to take it from 80 hertz to about 20 hertz. Now we can decide how long we want it to be. So let's say we want the sub drop to be a bar. So I've got it here at set about 20 hertz. Let's hear it. Uh, I'm gonna turn it up. The other thing we need to do is write some bypass automation. So let me do that really quick. Okay, turn the automation off. So now, oh, did I get it? I'm sorry, I did not. We'll try it again. Okay, so we are bypassing the plugin when we don't wanna hear it so we don't have to listen to that annoying 80 hertz ringing throughout our entire mix. Generators are kind of annoying, but once you get this set up, it's pretty fast and you can export a couple of custom bass drops in different lengths and different tempos based off what you like. So let's have a listen. All right, let's hear it now in the mix. Like I don't give up. Sounds awesome. Maybe we want to make it twice as long and make it super brutal, right? So we can just elongate it. I mean, that's super metal. Or maybe you wanna make it really fast so we can go and we can go um, half a bar here. So it sounds like this now. Like this, I don't give up. That's kind of a fast stab. So let's go for the super long one. And I'm gonna drag these automation points out here. Let's go for the super long one just because it's kind of ridiculous and uh, you know, who doesn't like a long, like 20 second long bass drop, right? <laughs> And again, you know, we can pick whatever frequencies, or maybe we want it to start a little bit higher. So let's see, let's see what it sounds like at 160. This is going to be pretty ridiculous. Like this, I don't give up. Completely absurd. So we'll start at 80. Now, sometimes people like to put saturation on these bass drops and harmonic excitement. So, for example, we could put uh, max bass on it, about waves, and we'll just put on, you know, like aggressive, pick a preset, and that's gonna give it a bunch of harmonics. Let's see it in action. Without it. Like this, I don't give up. Now, 
if you look at the spectrum analyzer in Cubase, you can actually see the harmonics that get added by Max Bass. So without it, now let me turn it on. So really it's up to you to customize it however you want. But like I said, what's cool is if you go and you make, let's just say 10 different bass drops, different keys, whatever, you can create a folder and you can save all of your sub drops, have them on hand and you can very quickly throw them into sessions and make your own. But learning how to make your own, as you can see, is very simple and very fun, and it gives you total full control over how brutal you, it is, how long it is, how fast it dips down, what frequency it starts, it ends at, and etc. So I recommend making your own sub drops because it allows you to get a lot more artistic with it and you have more control. For example, you may not want harmonics in your mix or you may want harmonics in your mix depending on how it sounds. So there you go, that's how you make your own bass or sub drops, whatever you wanna call them in your metal mixes. Thank you so much. Please click like on the video. I want to know how you're making your own sub drops. There are cool plugins like Sub Destroyer that do this by JST. Um, obviously, please subscribe for tons of more cool and powerful mixing videos. Thank you so much. I'm Joel Wanasek, and this is URM Academy.